All right. Thank you very much. We're starting on time. I don't know how that happened, but thank you all. Um, first thing, uh, Tim Patel, thank you and your green team and the library, certainly, for putting us up here. I mean, yeah. And um, we're, we have uh, IT Envy over here. They've got an owl. And what happens is that when you talk, it goes like this, and you're going to see, well, you're not going to see, but somebody's going to see that you're speaking, and it's going to go around the room. Right? Kind of weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. That's a good start, right? Um, Mark? Yeah. Will this session be recorded? It, we're already doing it, yep. So and have, I have to be careful what I say now. We have one step. Yeah. Then we can see your head on the screen. Okay. Yeah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Not comfortable, I'll tell you that right again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This, this is, I gotta say, I gotta tell a story. So um, back in 20, way back in 2019, um, we started a green team, an external green team for the climate smart communities in Riverhead. So I had to be there, had to be there. So I got there and uh, I'm really sorry now. No, so it's all good. So what happens is that um, we, we worked and worked and worked and this is the point we're at, but I'm at also at the point now where two weeks ago, I had a dream of two long tables with about 60 people at them. And I was doing a food scrap train the trainer program. And my dead grandmother was standing right in the middle. <laughs> so uh, you people are now responsible for my mental health. <laughs> All the good things that happen are gonna come from here. Uh, I've got, we're gonna go around the room first, Mary. I think that's my notes. Uh, Mary Morgan, my, one of my partners. Everybody's my partner. Uh, we, yeah, talk. We go. I, I'm Pat Peterson. Um, in Verhead, um, I'm the president of the Calvert and Civic. That's it. Okay, Mary Morgan, Salvold, and partner to in crime with Mark. <laughs> I'm Joan Carroll. I work for the North Fork Environmental Council. Partners with Mark, <laughs> and I live in Kutcha. I'm Ann Murray. I'm the land use coordinator for Southhold for the North Fork Environmental Council, and I live in East Mary. I'm Jamie Huey from Water Mill, and I am a member of Southampton Town Sustainability Community. I'm um, Beth Pateni. I'm the director of Green Inside and Out, which is a small um, nonprofit group based in Huntington, Off Island, and also on the steering committee of the Long Island Organics Council. Uh, Brian Sherman, uh, Independent Highways Commissioner of Public Works. Right. Jason Blizzard, Town of Riverhead Engineering Department. We're doing in uh, Town of Riverhead, Town Engineer, and Sanitation Superintendent. Rachel Lamport, Ecological Culture Institute in Hampton Bays. And I, my official title is just Assistant Shell Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tony Romano, also with the Ecological Culture Initiative and Hampton Bates. <laughs> and you don't I'm shovel? You shovels. <laughs> I'm the uh, lead shovel. Me too. <laughs> uh, Katie Plum, I organize, I live in Sag Harbor, East Hampton Side, and I organize the East Hampton Farmers Market in Merritt Park and the Sag Harbor Farmers Market in um, Bayswood. <laughs> uh, Tim Pertel, I, I head the Town of Shelter Island uh, Green Committee. Sarah Gordon, I'm on the Green Lessons Committee with Tim and I, um, the planner. I do planning and sustainability with Sylvester Manor here on Shelf Life. Hi, everyone. Nina Paul. Um, I am supporting Mary in the South Hold uh, Green Team. Paul Dark, sorry, I'm from East Hampton and I'm with the uh, Ross Parent uh, Environmental Committee at Ross School and I'm also with Change Hampton. Oh, great. Paul. Gloria Clancy, this is the East Hampton side right here. Um, I'm on the, the town's Energy and Sustainability Committee, and I have also I'm one of the people who just started the East End chapter of New Wild Long Island. Oh, oh I love that. Great. Hi, I'm uh, Kate Rogers. I'm a council member of the town of East Hampton. I'm the liaison to the Natural Resources Department and to the Energy and Sustainability Committee. Hi, Paul Munoz. I'm the chair of the Energy and Sustainability for East Hampton, and I am also on the steering committee for Change Hampton. Oh, okay. Oh, good, good tie-in. Okay. Um, I'm going to be brief. Um, just, just, uh, just a, a view. You know where we live, and these are these are geographical human-made lines, uh, as opposed to the United States, where the water flows. 
Yeah, you know, we're talking. Yeah, it is stunning, right? It's changed my life. But back about two years ago, it's like there was a guy. Actually, there was a guy that wanted to make states based around the watersheds. Right, and it was kind of a little strange, but we don't think so now because all the rain that comes down the end of the expressway uh, thing on Riverhead comes here, right? All of it. It's called the watershed, right? It drops there. And, and somebody told me a while ago that the EPA wants to know because if you have a spill, if Jason's truck goes sideways, sideways, we need to know where all the chemicals go. So I think the, one of the practical aspects, but just to know where the water is, um, we don't have to look any closer at that because we know we're in the Peconic Estuary. So the mission, and this it's really brave, to divert, recover, and reuse 100% of residential food scraps to create compost and return to the soils of the Peconic Bioregion. So we're using the term Peconic Bioregion um, because that's what it is. It's not a map of Pounds, it's not what it is. Um, this is three yards. I just I wanted to throw this out because nobody knows what three yards look like in a lot of places. Um, when you take two yards, cubic yards of food scraps, that's how big it is. Uh, sorry, two tons. Two tons is 1.4 times is about three. Yeah, two tons is about that much. So when the newspaper in the, in the, uh, the Channel 12 showed up to the uh, Cornell farm, they said, Where's all the food scraps? They look at this mountain of two tons of food scraps. Well, we've been working with them. They're over here. So they had to get this little camera and they had to go over really close to the food scraps. And that's kind of the picture right there. So uh, we're not talking about a lot of volume. And a lot of people think that food scraps is going to be, you know, billions and billions of yards of, of sloppy, mixy, awful stuff. And it's not. And that's part of the education and outreach that we're involved with. Ah, I like this one. On the left um, are our four sectors, residential, industrial, commercial, institutional, which is called ICI, and government. Um, these are being phased in in the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act right now, where they started with these three at two tons a week. Right? So they, back in 2022, uh, a year ago, the food scrap law demands that if you're putting out two tons a week, that you've got to bring it to either an anaerobic digester or a composting facility. Well, guess what? We don't have. Okay, so they're off the hook. They don't have to do it. So this is this is not good. Uh, so the second part of this thing is that they just announced the CLTPI just announced last week that they're going after the one ton people next year this time. Okay. So the year after they're going after the half ton. The year after they're going after residential. That's the last one. Oh, schools. Hospitals, sorry, hospitals, uh, what's the other one? Um, uh, nursing homes, hospital and nursing homes, thank you. And then schools, and then here. We are starting here because we have 160,000 people to scrape their place in the Peconic bioregion. And that's 40 tons a day. It's not a lot. It is a lot, but it's not a lot, right? And that's on 100% compliance. Add another 30% for these, and it's only 55 tons for the entire group, right? And that's if everybody chips in. Uh, you had a question, Tony. Uh, no, no, my question is, do we? Do you have any idea in the bioregion what the number of institutions there are that meet the current threshold for- That counted it for us? Yeah, I, I thought you had said it was like under a dozen. Oh, for, for Riverhead, we've got eight, like name them all. Yeah, with uh, eight right? in Riverhead. Right, and there's none in Southfold. I don't think there's even any in, in the other two towns. I really don't. Two oh, towns okay. a week. It's, oh, your grocery stores, the big grocery stores. We don't have big grocery stores, right? Mm -hmm. Not there's, even IGA. There's over 200 for all of Long Island, right. Nestle, and Suffolk. Right, 100, out of 100, split down the middle, a little over 100, a little over 100, right? <laughs> but it's still, all right, so let's talk about the big numbers really quickly. Residential in, in, in Suffolk County is a million and a half plus Nassau. We're thinking in terms of by county right now. So that's 3 million. It's 750 tons a day from here. It's another two or 300 from here. All right. Another three. You're talking about a thousand tons a day for two counties. I've been involved with discussions that we're starting up uh, this whole thing with the county with uh, Al Krupski, uh, Peter Scully, um, Sarah, Sarah uh, Lansdale. Um, a few other people, and they're talking about doing this countywide. We also want to look forward to the idea that the EPA is coming at us with a food scrap law, right? So if we, I'd like us to get ahead of this. So everybody says, I don't care if you have a law, I'm already doing it. So I want to be proactive, 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 plus one, plus one. So there's, there's three 
the senders and receivers, I got that idea from the, um, the uh, what do you call it? The, the, what the kitty over there? Transfer development, development rights. rights, thank you. No acronyms, please. Doctor, you don't break my speech. You're breaking up. So, yeah, so we have sending areas, we have receiving areas. Well, I figured that kind of works. Here we have people who make food scraps, and we have people who receive the food scraps. This is the list. Um, and in between, this is the hard part, and we keep stumbling on this. This is the really hard part is the transportation, right? So you may find residential brings it to their backyard, 30 feet, or they want to bring it to the South Old Town Transfer Station in, the, in the green. We don't have them yet, but we're going to talk about green bags. Um, or Drew's going to pick them up at your curbside, right? Curbside right. pickup. Or we're going to get the carters to do a third day instead of uh, you know recycling. They'll do greens. Uh, small private business pickup, and the Jason and I are buying a truck. <laughs> I want to buy a truck so bad. <laughs> so anyway, um, and the economic opportunity of all of this has a great impact on what we are bringing to the public. Small business trikes. I mean, the New York City people had trikes, like ice cream carts, and they were picking up the food scraps in the. They were peddling this stuff. This is going back almost twenty years. So I'd like to get that momentum back up. So the receiving areas, and remember that this is going to go like this. Um, backyard garden, 10 neighbors on rotation, except not my 10 neighbors, right? I don't work well with them. Community gardens, whether it's pollinator or food. County is talking about setting up uh, community pollinator gardens with the little pocket parks, little little uh, worker parks. We're in discussion with Sarah Lansdale about that. And um, um, sure. Thank you. Uh, who, Saint Champions. You guys are already doing it. You're in the news of this. That's right. All right. So this is another place where this the, this product could go. School gardens, the schools. Uh, we've got a couple of people represented here. I'll send the slides to you. Don't worry. It's, it's okay. I'll send them to you. Um, small, medium, and large farms. We started with a great idea. It's only it's only a ton a day, and the farms are saying like, oh, could you do the work for us? So this is why we want to think about providing this as the Pecani Biomix. Or something that's certified organic eventually that we can make and sell. Uh, private composting facility. Uh, we may have uh, Glenda Alvarado on the on the uh, call today. She's from Grounds for Appeal, a uh, young woman, um, minority woman, single owner business kind of model, right? The private enterprise model, right? And we're going to talk about private um, private equity, pro public private partnership. And municipal composting. I think those are the only three we can come up with. You may find variations of that or something a little finer, but the thinking about one model, one business model, one business model. Um, this is Mary's puzzle. And if you notice, she's put all the pieces in the middle. She has the only piece left. So this group, I, I don't know what to tell you if you're green or red or purple. No contribution, right? So everybody's involved with this. I wish the puzzle was different. Um, everybody's involved with this, and this is the puzzle pieces we've got here today, right? This is a, a brainstorming and inter, inter networking and everything else. Um, Mary sent me this last week, and I got all excited. So this is just the personal flow chart. So I would like us to develop, where's that? I want us to develop another one for a restaurant, because back of house, so 70% of food scraps comes from residents, 30% comes from ICI, right? Industrial, commercial, institutional. All right, so the 70% is the big lift. It's also the hardest one because there's 160,000 people that we're talking about. So if we had a flow chart for all of this, then we'd go to, rest, we've been to the restaurants, talk, talk, we will get to this. Um, the back of house is 30% and it's all greens and good stuff. The front of house is, you know, the forks and the, the, the napkins and the baby shoes and everything else that goes into the gray bin and they just go like this with it at the end of the night. So we're not looking for that 70%. So we're looking for the 30% of that 30%. So it's only about 10 so if you took back of house from 350, where's the, uh, James Ewing, where did he go? James, um, you guys, you and Tip pulled the restaurant list back about three, four years ago. And there's about 350 restaurants. Just, I think he took the whole East End. I think I remember you that. You guys are recycling star from him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So so that kind of information is valuable. So I know we've got 350 restaurants at you know 200 pounds a night. Now we know what those numbers are. Um, good enough. The divert, recover, and reuse we're finding also works for technological materials, whether it's your couch, your shoes, your sweater, everything else in household waste 
fits into this pattern of divert, recover, and reuse. So we're going to be, we've been starting already at the county and bi-county level to bring this to construction and demolition. We brought it to household waste because right now we're, we're dumping all this stuff into the incinerator. Everything's going in. We burn everything. The landfills are closing. The last two landfills are closing. Did I mention that? No. Uh, the last two landfills are closing. Um, and soon, 100 weeks. 84 weeks. 84 weeks. Uh, it was 100 weeks two months ago. Now it's only it's 84. 84. It's not good math. It's 84. 84 something, right? So a while back, it was a long time. Now it's not a long time. And they're already capping Brookhaven. They're grinding up the glass that we can't give away because we got to pay to get rid of it. They're grinding it up and putting, capping the landfills with it, right? So we, we need to think about what can we do with glass? We've been in discussion. It's hard. Glass is hard. Um, but another thing, what local products could we possibly develop in that in that? pattern of divert recovery and reuse. Not today. All right, we'll do food today. Promise? Okay. Um, and what conditions must be in place? The big question here is what conditions must be in place to create our success? Because 2030 is roaring at us. Uh, we have solid waste management goals that we've got to meet, and we intend to help to do that. That's part of our plan. Um, the DEC has been asking us to help get things off the ground to make them happen, feedback what we learned to them, and develop new programs, spread them out, copy and paste to another town, and every town is not going to look like every other town. We know this. Right? We've worked closely with Southold, and we've worked with Riverhead, certainly, and our, our solution sets are not going to be the same, but that's okay. That's me. It's the shortest I've ever spoken. All right. Uh, Mary. Mary Morgan, please. Uh, yours, you mean? Yeah. Uh, are we going to get those slides? Yes, we can yeah. send them. It's, it's yeah. all part of it's all being recorded, and uh, I think we have a several pilot programs we're going to be presenting to everyone, and I'll be talking about the South Hole pilot, and um, I have some props. I have some props. I have a question. What is it about the ten neighbors in rotation for the? I think it was institutional. Yeah, the, no. The, the, remember that these columns are just definitions of categories, and that this column is a a, a group of whatevers, and this is this the receiving areas, and we're going to be able to do this with right. with these, right? Because we're going to be drawing lines, and and all of these possibilities are going to create the the conditions that are going to create the uh, success that we, we we wind up with. So it does. It's not a straight line thing. Don't read it as a straight line thing. Uh, what was the question? Oh, about what does it mean? That was ten you. neighbors in rotation. Like oh, so if I got ten neighbors on my block, right? We could walk our scraps to my house and put it in the back, right? That's after my divorce, right? Or because of the divorce. But you could take ten neighbors working together with a community pot, half a pound per person per day, right? Household is two and a half people, pound and a quarter a day. It's and ten people. It's ten pounds a day. It's like, I don't know, that bucket. There's your 10 pounds a day from 10 families, all right? Or maybe two buckets, right? It's not a lot. So we could conceivably share 10 days worth of 10 people doing this in a neighborhood, right? That were cooperating and helpful and future seeking and intelligent. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so we wanted, uh, Mark and I had three asks of you today. Uh, the first one is we wanted you to join our listserv, and you'll be getting an invitation via your email. And it's a place we can all start to communicate and share resources and, and get a network going. Um, we want to uh, encourage you to think about joining, doing this to join in the benefits of the bioregion and to see us all as a resource, especially um, everyone in the room. And Mark and I are willing to travel all around the Taconic Estuary to go to meetings and talk to you and share whatever information, you know, our successes. So the benefits of the complex bioregion, I think you all know them, but just they're the towns can save a lot of money and they can comply with New York state law. Households can save a lot of money by reducing their food waste. The, um, the national average is about $1,500 a year, but I think it's actually more than that. And of course, it lowers cost and use of fertilizer and water on their lawns or gardens. Farms receive black gold. It lowers their cost for the use of chemical fertilizers and irrigation. And the big winner is the Patagonic bioregion, the entire community, because compost helps soil retain water. 
which is reducing stormwater runoff sediment, it's filtering water into the aquifer, improves our coastal water quality, it aids in carbon sequestration. Um, we are going to be starting a public awareness campaign that actually got jump started with Kate's uh, uh, article about eyeing table to farm compost plan in East Hampton Star. Um, about seven people sent me that article, Central Ohio get how they got people to eat their leftovers. And I was looking at it thinking, what what what's in this article? What are the um, the pieces that made it work? And they started with households first. They're the big bite. They did a public awareness campaign to measure the impact. They highlighted those costs, that $1,500 a year that a family can save, and the gallons of gas, 22 million gallons of gas used annually to transport food that's thrown away. And the article talked about the public awareness campaign successes in Toronto and Britain, where they reduced food waste by 30% and 18%. Um, the our 30 people, 30 families, household and uh, pilot in South Hall. Um, just a quick brief overview of how we did. These are the happy families that were eager to participate. Um, a lot of them had children who were learning about this in school. Uh, we had some prep. What we did was, um, we with the help of Slow Food We Said, we bought these green buckets. Everybody had two buckets. We gave them one bucket and we had made arrangements with a farm to receive all the food scraps. And they had some requirements, so only certain things could be thrown into your bucket. The idea was to demonstrate to the town that people would be willing to not throw their food scraps into our South Hole yellow bag, but to put them instead in a green bucket and bring the green bucket to the town transit station in a special place. The special place was something that Three of us, Sherry Thirlby, Mark, and I, were, we were the receivers. We would be there at 4.30 every day uh, for the 30 days to receive these buckets and give the household a new bucket. And uh, we took the food waste to the farm. A farm accepted them, put it, put the organic, we put it into their uh, bucket of organic food scraps, which they then made into compost. And um, we would deliver the clean the buckets and deliver them back. It was labor intensive, but it proved a point. The point being that people were willing to do this and they're 100% compliant. Um, so, go to the next slide. so yeah, so what did we do? We diverted a uh, 1,000 pounds of food scraps from the waste, waste stream in 30 days, and that equals the national average, about half a pound a person a day. That's two thousand pounds in gigabytes, one metric ton. It was, uh, if we extrapolate that for projected into 23,000 South Old Town residents, that's five tons a day of food scraps or two, mil two million tons a year. Um, again, we demonstrated to the town that people were willing to do this. And two of my favorite comments were, people want a place to put their food scraps. They want the towns to compost or come up with some solution here. And uh, a lot of people were shocked at the volume of food scraps they had, and they were committed to lowering their waste. So I think that was a success all the way around. And that also led to Mark's uh, putting together a pilot program in Riverhead. Oh, and we have somebody else, thank God, that's on it. Yeah. Uh, who's next? Topley? No. Yeah. Yeah. Tom. Oh, Riverhead. Oh, would you like to speak through? Sure. Okay. okay. No slides for you. No slides. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we had a a program that lasted between August fourth and November twenty first, almost four months. We had um, ten households, four restaurants. Um, and the senior center in Aquabon. The senior center was probably our largest producer. We would pick up from the restaurants typically once a week, depending on the preference of the restaurant. And we would pick up from the residents, um, the 10 residents, twice a week. That was the schedule. Most of them 
didn't really have anything twice a week. It was closer to once a week, but that was the schedule anyway. It was two times. Um, over that 90, to 90 plus days, we collected about two tons of um, food scrap and brought them to two places um, sequentially. First, we brought them to the Lavender Farm on the corner of Roanoke and Sound Avenue, Riverhead. And I would say for the first month, month and a half, and then we were able to use the um, Cornell Cooperative Farm on the corner of Osborne, the Hortons. Hortons. Hortons, on the corner of Horton and Sound Avenue. Uh, we were able to use their facility, which was closer to our facility, and also they had much better water pressure, <laughs> which, yeah, he rinsed out these buckets before he go to talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, we used a town of Riverhead pickup truck. We also had at our disposal a six by 12 um, trailer, but we didn't need it. We probably the last few um, deliveries, we filled the pickup truck up. But besides that, it was, you know, it was a little bit short um, as far as volume goes. The rounds or first of all, the days were uh, Monday and Thursdays, and we would pick up between 9.30 and noon, and then proceed to the one of the farms and drop off our uh, compost or table scraps in those locations. And the lavender farm uh, put hay on top of our food scraps. And Cornell Cooperative Extension, they actually took a rototill and first wrote it. I think they rototilled the scraps with soil, with the existing soil, and then they put rounds over the top um, and com composted that way. Future plans. Hopefully, this spring. We plan to go, that was phase one I just spoke of. We plan to do phase 1A. Mark, I don't know how much you have. Do you have anything for phase 1A or can I <laughs> highlight it? Just go ahead. Okay. So phase 1A, I've heard a lot of different numbers. Um, I think probably the safest is 200 households. Yeah, it'd be reasonable. Okay. Yeah. 200 households. Um, and we would up the amount of farms at our disposal, hopefully. <clears throat> and um, we would use the pickup truck as well as the um, trailer. That's our initial um, push is that we're gonna use that for the 200 houses. It might not take, it might take two days, but that's our um, plan for now. One thing I left out, or well, two things, um, we collected our table scraps in the same bucket that South Old did. Um, again, two per person or two per facility. Actually, the, the senior center, we had three or four over there, right? Four buckets. Over yeah, there. four buckets over there. Um, and other than the senior center, our, our main focus was Calverton. That's where the bulk of the homes were. And that probably will where we will focus on phase one A as well. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. Cool. Yeah. Well, Chris, yeah, James. How, how did you find the people to supply the fenders? Mm -hmm. So um uh, can you do that? Sure. Because otherwise I don't have to say anything. You can just like handle the whole, whole thing. You well, Mark doesn't have the order of speakers, so we're just sort of I'm looking, looking at Mary. Mary, Mary, Mary. Thing. Help me, help me. Um it'll be up on the slide. Oh, oh you have a slide? Mark required it. And we took a ball to name them. You're subcontract. <laughs> You're subcontract. Yeah, it's I tried good. to edit them because Mark is still my name. Why didn't make the slides? You said you just said Lisa made this. Yeah, you must want to be edits. Really? Yeah. 
All right, so the, the door prize is if you can find the error. Okay. Um, oh, that's, oh, wow, that's my first one. Very cool. Yeah, you're almost done. Yep, okay, so um, I think there's like four slides, not, not, not a large amount. So um, I'm speaking on community engagement, how we got folks to participate. Um, you can skip to the next slide. There we go. So our community engagement, the big picture, we look for words like target audience, which I didn't understand any of that lingo. So uh, that was borrowed from Mark and Mary, and now I'm learning it. Uh, we went for residential and restaurants, right? Um, the residential, pretty straightforward. You have a house. It, it's actually single family homes at the moment. We're not complicating things by apartments or anything like that. And then the restaurants for small local restaurants. Um, I don't know why I'm looking at you. And, and I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the restaurants were, um, you know, not the chains, small ones, uh, locally owned. And do you want me to say who they were? Yeah. Oh, so Bean, Bean and Bagel uh, is a, a morning place, like they're open 6 30 till, till 3 daily. And um, they produce, I think, Two to three buckets of pickup, and the other restaurants were the other restaurants were uh, Golden Jalapeno, same kind of operation within a few blocks away from the first restaurant, and one other restaurant downtown was Dolce Cabana, and they had two to three bu buckets as well. They got up to four. Yeah, they started out with two. We upped them to four. Um, Next slide. Which is an interesting comment because what happens is when people get into the habit, they change their behavior and they're starting to, oh, it's like, oh, should that should go in, right? So after and after what we caught the what we caught the municipal, um, the, the uh, what do you call the uh, senior center, they were they were dropping uh, broccoli stalks off like this. I'm thinking I'm taking these home making a soup, right? So there's another there's another education component of this, how to reduce that. That's going to be like later this year. Um, because we need more to do, um, because we need to reduce the amount that we're, we're throwing away, all right, and that one of the education components that we did a webinar right after the pandemic started, we did our last bucket in February 16th or something, and then on, on that next day or two days later, the country shut down for a year, so we, we did an educational webinar instead, so we got right on it, so education and, and uh, outreach is a very important component of this. Uh, and just to, uh, to tell you what we in the buckets, so we were talking about there's only certain things that are going in the buckets. So another term, fog, never knew about it before, fat, oil, grease. So no fat, no, no oil, no grease, no dairy, no bones. And no meat. <laughs> um, very select in, uh, stuff going into the buckets. But we did, do you want me to explain why we did that or just keep it there? No. Nah, okay. So our community engagement, how do we get the people? Um, so because we're doing the pilot in Calverton, um, I look to our civic, we are, our board is uh, 10 people. And I asked our board to step up at, and lead by example, the way we do other things. And, and we got volunteers. So, so that was a really terrific mm -hmm. thing. Um, and then it, they were going to participate in the 90 day Calvin pilot. You already know it's over at the two buckets at the curbside, take up twice a week. And then our, uh, the reason the geographic area work was that the refuge district is one of 11933 is one district in the town. So it made it easier for the department when they go to look at their routes. Um, it made more sense to stick in one district, don't cross the boundary to the others. However, our district is really big. So they had to go from the, you know, the east side of it all the way over to the west side of it. So I'm on the east side of it and being bagel and more of the rest of the residents in Timber Park were on the far west side. And we're talking about several miles across. Uh, so we still tried to make it easier. And if we had you know many more people versus the 10, um, that would have been a little more complex, but we tried to make it as simple as we could as the districts. So we're all in one district, you can go to the next slide. Um, so our community engagement was public private partnership, the order and school, we're the uh, civic, there's the nonprofit, there's government agencies and schools. So under the civic, it was created under uh, Greater California Civic, and that's me. Uh, nonprofit was North Fork Environmental Council, which um, actually I should just step back one moment. Uh, folks that were 
uh, involved in the effort in Riverhead were uh, Mark Hodner, Lisa Gavalas, Barbara Blast, myself, Drew Dillingham, Jason Blizzard, and Shannon Clifford from the um, engineering office. So those are the folks that were sitting around the table each time we had a meeting. So those are the people who were. Um, in fact, and yeah, we got, dragged Beth she got in. dragged in. She yeah. got dragged in. We dragged and a the, grant writer in. So and we'll start we talking involved about a, a, our grant writer in the town as well. So um, the nonprofit that was represented is, is North Fork Environmental Council, represented by Lisa Gavalas, who's a board member there. Government agencies for the town of uh, Riverhead Engineering Department with Drew Dillingham, Jason Bull, and Shannon Clifford. Uh, the town of Riverhead Environmental Advisory Committee was uh, Barbara Blass. And schools was, um, now schools we haven't picked up from, right? We're, we're planning that with an education component. And th those two schools that are in Calvert, and there's only two, they're both, uh, one's an elementary school and one's uh, slightly larger. The elementary, so I, I don't know where grade they go to. Uh, all grades actually because it's a charter school. So Riley Avenue Elementary is uh, up till fifth grade and Riverhead Charter School. I think they go all the way up to graduating you out, but I don't know that their population has gotten that large yet. And they've acquired it just an FYI, they've acquired a new property further east in the town on South Avenue, and that's going to be their high school. Um, so they have both. So those are the only, those are the two schools that are in, in Calvin. And I think that's the end of my story. There you go. Any questions for Tonkley? Yeah. Sure, just back up a minute. Sure. Um, the food scraps that you're collecting, did you say no meat, no dairy? Yeah, no fat, no oil, no grease. Mary, are you doing, trying to do it the same way? She did. That's where our example came from. Because that's a very hard ask, it seems to me. Um, it's kind of easier than you think. It's kind of easier than you think. Because really what people are doing is they're really scraping whatever they're doing immediately into one container. All they have to do is look at what they've got and go, fat, oil, grease, nope, this. So you ask the question, is it fat, is it oil, is it grease, is it meat, is it dairy, is it bone? It's and, it's, and it's and it's also not that hard for restaurants to comply with. That. That's the front of the house idea. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Most restaurants yeah. operate, they can actually deal at the front of the house as in food prep, just separating the greens out. Oh. And they also, with the fat oil and grease, they usually have a pickup, some some scrap. They're truck already, right? yeah, they're they're already, already collecting that for bio right. purposes. Yes, we're not looking to uh, have a I'm survey. Sure. But it was set up in Nova Scotia where it's mandatory. Everyone has the green and dairy. And they have the recycled bit. And then you have your garbage. And you cannot mix it up. Otherwise, they will not pick it up. Mm. But That's I, don't, I don't remember us. separating meat or dairy. I don't well, the, so the reason for if, 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 uh, is thinking the same question. The reason for doing that is so that we could include organic farms easily, yeah, without any as many barriers to begin with. Right. And um, I'm just going to do one extra thing because it's not on my slides. But what we did, we went to no, uh, Nopo North Fork Organic Farmers, Farmers Organization, yes. and we found out the answer to organic was how to be organic farms deal with what we've got and their math was as long as it's 165 degrees for five days they've met their standard right they still have to be certified mm -hmm. certified by their certifiers right and each farm is going to be different on how much volume they have and how long they've had their piles but that's going to answer it for you so that you can see here more signing up in the speech here no, I'm actually inviting Glenda. Um, she comes from Center H and she's got this uh, the only compost uh, operation that we know of, uh, commercial operation. Uh, she's taking in eight tons a day, uh, maximum uh, DEC allowance. Is she ready? Yeah. Yeah, really? Yeah. Is she speaking? Hello. Can you hear me? Wait, can we hear you? Hello? Can you hear me? No. Can you hear me? Uh, oh, hold on. You have a little uh, thing next to her over here, huh? No, that's Love you. you. Oh, there you go. I think the owl is off. Oh, oh did the owl fall out? Hello? That owl. Hold on. Yeah, hi. No. All right, Glenda, can you try to speak? Let me see. Hello? Yeah. She may be muted on her end. It's, it's in the back, right? Okay. Michael, power. 
Oh, sorry. Hope nobody from Audubon is here. Yeah, you want to do that? Yeah. And I've got a mic here. Do you want me to call Beth? Wow. It's on. She's on, but. All right, hold on. She's there. And okay, go. Uh, Judy can hear me. She's on another one. Red. Go or else. Like yellow or green next. Yeah, it's red still. Press that again and over a whole. That was the mute. Okay. Mic off, mic on. Red is bad, green is good, right? Yep. Try the front. Try it. Uh, okay. okay, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you want to put it over front of the mic? Is that helpful or not? Hi, Linda. Hi. How are you? Good. You want to speak up, I think. Okay. Okay. Here. Here. Can you hear me now? If we listen really carefully. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Um, because um, there's an there's echo on the Zoom. Like, I can hear myself. Right, but we're not suffering in here. So. Okay. So let me mute myself on Zoom. Okay. Good idea. Is that better? Yes. I don't no, know. That's good. Yeah. Yes, that's good. Take turns listening. <laughs> Go ahead. You want to push the space bar when you to go to the next slide? Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, my name is Glenda. If all of you can hear me, yeah. I am located in Center Beach, and I started my company about three years ago. Uh, I pick up from residents, I pick up from. Uh, do you have a slide, by the way? Yeah, we, yeah, the slides are up, and we're ready to go. Like I said, three years ago, there was nothing around in Nassau County. And so I just decided to go ahead and search for land. And I stumbled upon um, House Farm in Center Beach. So that's where I've been. I, this is how my site looked when I originally got there with every kind of weed that you can imagine. I, um, then decided to apply for the DC and it's a DC registration. And that took a long time to get it approved. Uh, so I had to get an engineer and uh, you know the land uh, rated uh, a certain way for uh, the food scraps to be received. And so this is how the site looks. Um, if you're on slide number three. Okay, um, Got it. Okay, so now I have a receiving pad and I have my skids here as well as a milling base pad. And I run it um, with an aerated static uh, pile, um, which means that I have. Uh, the blowers and timers, and um, and so that all gets done within about six to eight weeks. And uh, this um, piece of machinery at the end is as if there were I turn out the compost. Um, so uh, you know when I got there again, I didn't have anything, so it, it's taken a long time and. Uh, to get customers and um, you know callers to be able to come. So now I'm I'm getting um, lines and um, from from this elevator of Brookhaven, um, as well as uh, manufacturing and company that comes uh, and drops off um, alfalfa sprouts and so forth. Um, I also have my residents as well as the um you know different vendors in, in malls um so i i have this one acre of the compost and i receive blue chips and weeds and then i will be selling a lot of it but most of it is it's uh turned back to the farm um, so, slide number five, I 
you know, I'm looking to expand. So I hope to find that um, the next piece of plan so that I can get more food scraps and be able to divert more from um, all of these uh, residents and as well as other vendors. So um, that's pretty much it. What are the farms you're talking about? Hobbs, 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 I don't have the funds to be able to buy a yeah, truck, but you know the the hauler that brings me, um, you know the the alfalfa sprouts. Obviously, I don't I don't do any of that, and so it's very convenient they come. But um, the rest I pick up. What, how much do you charge for? Yeah, let's speak up there. Go ahead. How much do you charge for the service? So it's uh, thirty six dollars a month for the residents, um, but for the uh, tonnage, it's um, well, it depends, right? Because depending on on the hauler, I've had to scale back. So right now, I'm at fifteen dollars a yard. So. Um, if you're going to go by tonnage, like we've done it that way, so that way um, I can accept a little bit more. Linda, I, re I remember um, hearing maybe from you that you were allowed, uh, DEC allows you eight tons of food scraps a day. Yeah. Okay. A week. A week. A week. What did I say? Okay. A ton a day. Sorry? A ton a day. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? How much is she processing right now? She gets that. She needs that one time a So I get it the about um, eight, eight or nine times, really, just in one um, delivery. So I process that in one day. So yeah, so when when does the when does the time stop on the eight tons being available? Once it's once it's put into a windrow, does it stop counting? So once I couldn't hear that, I don't know why. I, I'm sorry, Glenda, it's Mark. Uh, I'm just curious. You get eight tons dropped off on the pad. How long before you can take the next eight tons? Uh, the following week. Okay. Uh, How many weeks? One week. How quickly does, does it compost? Oh, so then after that, Jim James wants to know uh, how long before it becomes really, really yeah, tough compost. Weeks. All right, is that winter, winter and summer? Yeah, the aerated static, static cloud. cloud. It's, 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 it's not seasonal. My backyard compost matters, right? <laughs> right, yeah. All right, anybody else? Yeah, in my pile. I'm getting about 150 um, uh, degrees, uh, you know, for a couple of weeks, and then obviously it goes down. And just, it's just a, a thumbnail, I don't need exact. The, the browns to greens is in what ratio? Um, it's two. Well, wow. Two to three. I mean, um, two. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and like what's, yeah, the maximum height that you're allowed, or is there none? So, no, I don't, I mean, the DB has to have that limit of six feet. Um, and it's also difficult, right? Because I have a skid steer, which is uh, limited with the time, with the height. Mm. Um, so I have about six feet wide and then about 100 feet long. Okay. Um, Linda, are you just using the skid steer to turn your piles? I don't turn my piles. I have blowers to uh, aerate the pile. You aerate your pile with what? I have blowers 
flowers. Oh, I mean, okay. Yeah. Um, I have a question yeah. from Zoom. Um, he wants to know how how long do you have your piles on ASP? Okay. Hey, Glenda, this is Chocolate. Hi. Um, wondering when you have the drop off for the eight tons, uh, you have to move that, correct? You're not dropping right on the aerated pile? Right. Okay. So, what's the height on the aerated pile that you maintain for those several weeks? Like I said, it's six feet tall. Okay. Yeah, that's the limit of the skid steer. Yeah. I mean, I could do a little bit more, you know, like eight feet. Does it get up to that? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't have the height. How wide are these rows? If you want it. Yeah, eight feet across. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from the DEC. Limitations. Is there a next tier uh, so that you can have you can scale your business? So, and what are the criteria for, for that? Yeah. So there is a possibility for for me to um, to get more uh, or be allowed to do more. But I have, yeah, again, I have to go through the process of applying for that to um, to be allowed to get more. Just before I am able to apply for register um, for registration, yeah. <laughs> because um, right right now I'm um, I'm looking at a, a lower level um, before I get to like this huge commercial shut. Uh, so um, at that level, I need to apply for certification okay. and versus registration. Yeah. yeah, Paul, I had a question on, so the bulk of your business come from collecting or from selling or from both, which is greater? Well, um, considering I've been in business for three years, it's been, and COVID hit and everything, right? Um, it's, it's been a little bit difficult to get business. So really, this year would be, it, it's my first year that I'm going to be able to sell the compost um, at a larger scale. Um, last year, I did sell some, but I, you know, the business um, of getting those food scraps was difficult. And now that I have a hauler uh, that is bringing me all um, the food scraps, it's much easier and I can be, you know, make it um, faster and also like just getting more product. Glenda, a follow up question to the uh, tier system with the DEC. Could you give us um, the first tier? Is it something like 3,000 pounds or tons? Yards? You know, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it's Right. Um, I have to look it up. How many yards can you have on site at one time? It's oh, yes. on, for on that facility, yeah. it's, it's a lot different. Than that. Okay. It's like you're pro able to process 10,000 yards of compost. So you're allowed to have 10,000 drops at once? Well, not at once. It, but, it, you know, throughout the year, not, not, you're speaking, are through 10,000 yards. But you're allowed, because we're look, I'm looking to ask for the answers for what's allowable for the DEC, not what's possible for the grid. I thought that's what's allowable for the DEC. I have another question on Sam. Yeah, um, what is your contamination rate and how do you deal with contaminants? You know, it's been, uh, I do everything manually. Um, so the contamination rate is just, it's probably, I have to say, only like, like two, three percent because I will literally in the with my hand and picking the stickers and the rubber bands and, you know, the contaminants from me. <laughs> and, like, I literally go right there. I stop my kids here, get out, and I get out. Um, so... <laughs> yeah, she's very positive. You guys just moved in all day. <laughs> Glenda, what about a tour? If somebody wanted to take a tour of your, your, your place? Yeah, sure. You can come along. I'm 
to let me know when. Just uh, have people like um, email you and let you know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, we've done that actually. A couple of us spent a couple hours on this. We're really cool. Right. They did it last year. Like, we'll come back, Linda. Yeah. So uh, Beth and Kenny to say, yeah, uh, Tim. I understand. You've got, a, you've got an inflow outflow throughput thing uh, question here. Uh, you, I know you spent the first year making the stuff and now you've got enough to sell. Is that correct? Yes, yes, I do. Um, and so, what I'm going to be doing um, in order to avoid any kind of um, weed seeds getting in, I'm just, I have to like put it in bags. Um, like the wonton bags, just so that um, no animals will carry it, like birds or um, you know the wind and everything just going um, into the compost. So that's my next um, project. So, but to your question, do I have enough to sell? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, the goal is to just to get it to a run off site. At a faster rate, is that the idea? Yeah, well, you, you know, what's your, what, you've got a business goal, and we're not going to ask you those numbers, Linda, but I mean, as far as, um, are you trying to balance the input and the output so it's kind of even? Yes, um, I, I mean, I definitely, you know, know I'm that right, like, I have an input and an output, and I want to be able to get the output and 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 the output you have a real business model. Yeah. So, so the last question, Glenda, is who are you selling to and how do they get it? Um, so I have, um, you know, a connection that uh, this person is able to deliver for me. I don't have a, a truck that I can actually deliver. And another business um, opportunity. So it's not an SUV. That's it. Amazing. <laughs> A camper, we use a camper. And, and are you using, sorry, and, and what are you using to contain it? So that they move. Um, like, um, one ton bags? One ton bags? One ton, one ton, I guess one ton. <laughs> so one if I'm a resident, I don't want one ton, what happens? Um, I just put it in um, buckets. I use the small and it's about the that I can sell. Okay. All right. Um, if there's no other questions, we're going to move on. Thank you, Glenda. I appreciate it. I enjoyed all of it. You saved the day. Well, I'll tell you, technology, boy, isn't it great? Until it fails, you can. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I was fortunate to be friends with a cabinet maker who had given me between three and four hundred garbage bags of maple shavings, which are the perfect ingredient for carbon because it holds moisture, it holds air, it's light to carry, it's easy to work with, and it was free. So um, we also use the mulch leaves on site. We also use the topsoil from Good Ground, which is amazing topsoil because it has um, a lot of sand in it. So it has a lot of filtration built into um, what's available to us on site. So what I've been preaching as I do two bins at the Quad Beach Club for three years now, and now I'm doing um, a site at a cemetery in Southampton, is um, best practices mixed with um, local and easy, you know, whatever works the easiest. So um, in Southampton at the cemetery, I used logs that were already there to make my bins. And then I used the waste from the cemetery as the carbon. And I had the most amazing bins with the most amazing black hole being created at that cemetery. At the villa, where I've grown it from one bin to four bins, um, pretty much it's done by hand. Uh, I have very little rubber bands and plastic scraps I pick out, but I do them by hand, just like Linda. And um, we turn it by hand. We don't use any machines. We hand screen it through two different screens, a half inch screen and a quarter inch screen. And we put um, the fallow season, the winter season that people don't um, get a finished product from. They just contribute. We use that in the garden in the spring. So it's uh, March to June, June to September, September to November, and then November back to March, all that goes into the garden. And we harvested over a thousand pounds this year that went to St. Rosalie's Food Pantry. So over three years of having the Food Pantry Garden, we have turned all of our beds um, into hoop culture beds or no-till beds, biodynamics possible, and we use the compost that we're making on site um, into those beds to grow this food. So we're up to 22 um, 20 by four foot beds. Um, the compost and the beds are something I learned at KK's and Southhold. You don't compress the soil, you don't step on the beds. Um, you do mound planting and you use what's around you. So I bring in not a lot, but a considerable amount of fish carcasses, um, crab shells, oyster shell, um, horseshoe crab shells from the beach. And I mix that in with the kelp from the bay, which is right on site. And I amend the hoop culture beds. And I amend the compost bins with the stuff that I have just right in the area to try to unscientifically, without testing, make a good mixture that gives you a good end product. And um, it's gone really well. I mean, I've met amazing volunteers who have done some amazing stuff. We have three women who pick up everything at the East End Food Institute. So we've taken 12,000 pounds from the commercial kitchen in Southampton over the last two years. Um, and some of it does go to local chickens. Some of the people who pick up have chickens or know people with chickens. So. Chickens get first pick on some of this beautiful produce out of college. And then the rest of it comes to me either at the cemetery or at uh, the villa. And then at the Quad Beach Club, it's awesome because it's a private enterprise where I'm teaching teenage kids who work at the beach over the summer, how to compost, what to do. It's a little more work. There's a lot more silverware involved. Um, but it really is amazing because uh, I got the kids doing the work, and we're in a parking lot on the beach. And I got to tell you, the only varmints I've dealt with out of all my sites over the three years is crows at the beach. <laughs> I mean, and really crows. Not seagulls. No, 
I don't know why. I don't have any seagulls at the beach. We have crows, and the crows must scare away the seagulls. But they're big crows. Yeah, we caught you on the way here on that yeah. <laughs> And so I import worms from my other two facilities to the beach, and the worms have finally stuck. So at first, it was just potato bug and, and uh, you know, other small things that, you know, weren't what I want. I want to see the worms. So um, what I've basically been able to do thanks to great management at the Beach Club, is uh, is create something that you wouldn't imagine could be sustained in a parking lot of a beach with just sand. And we made beautiful products with yeah. the mussel shells that wash up on the beach and everything. And then it goes right back into their herb gardens at the Quad Beach Club. And um, pretty much I've done backyard bins for people. Um, that was really my passion at first. That I wanted to do backyard bins all over Hampton Bays. But even though the materials are free, the pallets and uh, and the sawdust that I can give away to everybody, um, it's a little bit more work because we're trying to get people to do the work themselves. And even though the people who have joined and get their pail, I've gotten their neighbors or their grandkids to put stuff in the pail, and it's They've gotten more stuff from the surrounding area to contribute with them. Um, people don't want or are intimidated about having compost in their backyard. They worry about rodents and they're worried about smell. So there's never a smell. Um, if you put enough carbon on it, there's absolutely no smell whatsoever. And what I teach is you can neglect compost. People could drop kitchen scraps off and uh, it, it doesn't really smell in small quantities and you can get to it when you get to it and it's really not that hard. And um, it's really been quite fun and easy and exciting to show people how easy it is to just make a beautiful compound. So I think because I do everything by hand and because I have so much high quality material, I'm probably making some of the best compost yet you'll ever find because I buy compost wherever I can just like I hoard honey wherever I can <laughs> and uh and I, I say our compost is amazing because I think um we just doing the right mixture of stuff but not really doing a lot of testing and uh of course we'd like to grow um we're meeting with Southampton Town next week on Wednesday and we're hoping to um, pitch them on allowing us either at transfer stations to do something, or maybe they could just find some funding to get either like Blender's model or Southhold's model off the ground at private farms. Um, I've been scared to scale it up because it requires a lot of work. And we're just a handful of volunteers who are running a seven initiative nonprofit. So this is just one initiative out of the seven things we do. So, um, and it's all about having the right people that plug in. So I, I personally like working with volunteers because they're only there because they want to be there. But then you're limited on what you can accomplish. You can't overwhelm yourself. So how we get the community involved, how we get the government involved and how we scale up everything um, this is great to see everything that's happening real time and best practices. We visited the big reuse under the Queensboro Bridge. They're taking in a million pounds a year. Um, I worked at a green farmer's market in Forest Hills over the summer, and I watched the 10 pails get put out every week. They collect 25 tons a week at the 58 green markets. And they have six companies like the Big Readers who are taking in a million pounds a year. And um, they just got, Big Readers just got a brand new sifter yesterday. And so their circular sifter, which looks a lot like Blender's, is available, um, possibly on loan, possibly for a very good price. And I would love to use that as a selling point to scale up somewhere, maybe even make it mobile so that mm -hmm. it can be on a flatbed trailer and get used at multiple sure. facilities and sharing. Mm -hmm. um, I like the pumped air system 
but I prefer an auger system where you're turning the soil. So having a skid steer with just a front auger, we priced a used one for just a few thousand dollars. And then all you do is move the wind row over a few feet. And instead of having that, that air system, and having air, I mean, you could just put pipes with holes into a regular compost system and bring right. air in if you need it. Um, so having the air system is good, but really to make it um, even easier, I think a skid steer with an auger, or there's some mulch farms up in Calverton area that actually have a straddling <coughs> auger machine that augers from both sides and it straddles the windrow and goes down and turns it so that it doesn't get too hot and they don't have mulch fires. So we could possibly rent or borrow from one of those facilities to go to the transfer stations once a month and turn the pile. So how we um, how we scale up, you know, we've been investigating it. We've been seeing what everyone's doing. We're trying to figure out what's the best way and the best location to scale up and and then tent with it all over. Yeah. Name the pot, name the Calverton Farms, please. Well, one had a fire this year and they didn't have a DDC registration, so they got fire. I think it was driftwood or drift something, drift away. I read about them in the paper. It's not the first time for them. Yeah. But so they're, they're not they're doing everything illegally. They're making mm -hmm. mulch, which is great, but they're not turning oh. the pile enough to keep the heat down. Mm -hmm. If yeah. they would have all of our kitchen scraps, that would keep the heat down because then mm -hmm. you're not just having carbon, you're having nitrogen. So I I do like a three to one ratio. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I notice it could be two to one, and that works too. I never get to 165 degrees. Uh, 123 degrees is my sweet spot. I really think that that is ideal. Um, so the green plastic bags do not disintegrate. The corn cups do not disintegrate. Um, I've noticed that it takes a lot longer for newspaper and egg cartons to deteriorate. But what I do is because we can't sift it, everything goes right off and goes right back into the next bin. So our finished product is beautiful. Everything is repurposed right next door and the next bin over. And everything eventually disintegrates. So we had a kid at the Lady of the Hamptons who brought all the shredded uh, mats from their lunch. Um, their lunch mats, and he did a little thing where he was showing how quick we can get rid of those mats, but they didn't go for it, upscaling it. Um, pretty much my rule is whatever open door I run into, we see if we can't cross the threshold and continue these best practices. So the drop-offs are unsustainable? Yes. Do you train people? I mean, how do you so, manage what? So when each season starts, I meet the new people at the site. How many people are dropping off? So right now we only have 20 people that are paying. What I've done is if you were in my program previously and you stopped paying the online fee, you're still welcome to just come and drop off because I don't want to discourage anyone and it's not about money because um, that's just how we roll. So um, I probably have between 30 and 50 people dropping off willy-nilly whenever they want. Um, because the 10 acres at St. Joe's Villa is, um, is had, they gave us the first two acres next to Lynn Avenue. So people can come in, pass the garden, go to the bins, weigh their stuff, drop it off and be back out. And none of the sisters or none of the retreat groups that are going on father in on the property are being in any way disturbed. Um, and I've had no bad actors yet as far as nothing's being stolen, no, no fog being dropped, um, and everything's gone perfectly so far. I'm sure as you scale up, you'll get more <coughs> garbage and plastic and stuff like that. But um, up to this point, because I think uh, people are just so excited to participate, and have an avenue to participate mm -hmm. that once again, just like with the volunteers, the participants are doing their best practices. And so we tell them once, we really don't have to tell them again. Um, and that's just how it's been now for three years. So well, you have to say no we no dairy policy. I do at my house, I've had three bins for 20 years, and I do meat and dairy. 
And there's no issue with meat and dairy. It does disintegrate right. just as well, and everything loves to eat it. Um, the worms are very happy. Um, I've noticed that the worms in my uh, Craigslist $20 uh, rotating metal uh, <laughs> bin that sells at 400 the worms do amazing in that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the above ground one, the metal composter yep, yep. that spins, mm -hmm. I grow worms 10 times faster. And maybe it's because the worms go back down in the soil and disappear on me. And worms do disappear at certain times of year. I'll find no worms. And of course, red worms. Red worms. Right, yeah, the red worms. And uh, I mean, of course, on the full moon, when you take the top off the bin, there's a million worms. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> because everything's on a cycle, everything's on a cycle, and the moon cycle, the moon yeah. brings out the crazy. So, um, so worms are crazy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, just learning about how this is all working by doing it, and just um, really just you know, I've taken 120 yards of wood chips from local tree guys. And I have uh, pushed back on the poison ivy and the mugwort on the property yeah. and just claimed it with uh, wood chips. And then I use some of those wood chips into the composting as well. They take a lot longer, but they're just, I try to do a nice blend of whatever's available. The mulch leaves from the caretaker is amazing because they don't spray the property. Mm -hmm. Having maple leaves, if you get like the state with maple leaves that don't spray, that is beautiful material. So KK is in South Pole. He taught me a lot, Ira. Uh, the maple leaves are the best. His compost was amazing. Um, and cow manure. I have uh, chicken manure available to me, which I use occasionally, not often. I have fish that I use occasionally, not too often. And um, and that's basically it. Just the maple shavings from a cabinet maker. But what about the pine needles? Yeah, yeah, so stuck over here. Sorry. Yeah, I don't. We uh, my speech doesn't rely on my slides. <laughs> um, he, did, he did a deck presentation to Southampton Town. That's my worm pants because the worms are really happy when I wear them. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you eating? Or, go back. Yeah. Go back. Okay. Yeah. Just go. So, so let me just pick the yeah. So I don't you know, know. Tony's kind of described, you know, the start of where ECI began and where we've gotten to over the last three years. <clears throat> but as Tony said, we're now looking to scale up. I mean, to scale up. Uh, Really requires, as we think about it, some sort of cooperation beyond being a 100% volunteer organization, which we've been up until now. To and we're pursuing the idea of doing this in collaboration with the town of Southampton. We have, you know, been knocking on the door. We haven't gotten anywhere yet. We do have a meeting uh, scheduled next week with the, the decision makers there. Hopefully, Mark uh, will be able to join us um, no, because, I, because I think we, you know, one of the things that's very helpful here is creating the sense of what's going on regionally to uh, give a little bit of backbone to the, the town officials. Because they're, you know, they're a little bit gun shy. You know? There's been bad experience in the town with their brown recycling. <clears throat> the town of Southampton is set up differently from Riverhead because uh, we have a four transfer stations in the town still, which creates an opportunity. It's not a great opportunity in the sense that uh, the way the uh, current uh, Waste disposal in the town of Southampton works. There's private haulers and, and there's the transfer station. And the vast majority, uh, 85% estimators, uh, goes through private haulers. Uh, so there's only that, that uh, um, uh, lesser percent of the residents bring their, uh, their trash directly. To the big, what do they call it? The bag and pay system. The green bags. The green bags. Uh, so it's 50%. But that gives us an opportunity, I think. To uh, develop a pilot program in uh, in conjunction with the town. Now, uh, you know, this is it gives more visibility to what we want to do. The town, you know, can put its imprimatur on it to help us scale up. But uh, more importantly, the transfer station creates an opportunity if we create compost on site there. People who are bringing their trash already to the transfer station can just separate out uh, their grains. And dump it directly onto the pile. That's the concept that we're looking at. Now, obviously, you know, one of the major advantages uh, also of doing that and cooperating with the, with the town is that that will open the door to some sort of access to funding, either from the state uh, or uh, when it becomes available from the EPA. We're very interested in further discussion with what you've been doing in Southold about 
the grant or Riverhead, the grants that you've been working on, because that's the next key step for us in order to get access to the kind of equipment that we want uh, to scale the operation up, whether it's getting the screener or uh, uh, that we need, or uh, the uh, uh, to, to turn the, uh, the the equipment to turn the windrows. Uh, that's going to be where we, we we need to help from uh, from grant funding. But our vision still is to make it as much as possible and keep the volunteer component because we think that really adds a lot to the mix. Uh, that uh, in terms of helping build community awareness, that's going to be uh, really a key element. Uh, so uh, you know. Uh, that's we're kind of on the threshold. Uh, I said, really? knock, knock <laughs> <on the door. laughs> like, we, we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things you touched oh, on that yeah, we want to help you yeah. with. You know, a lot going on. You, the volunteer component, the community engagement, the community building, uh, which we're putting up on the website for them to see. And all of this is here. Well, I think that's right. And I think also, you know, even from the, 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 the level that we're currently at, stepping it up to the next level. The community engagement is so important because this is all about building awareness. We're okay. still early days. And you know, going back to your charts, Mark, if we want to get to high, you know, level of, of awareness and penetration in terms of, 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 of uh, uh, capturing food waste, it's all about community and community awareness. And in Southampton, 85% of the people who are using private haulers. We've got to get to their heads right? mm -hmm. and, 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 and make them realize the importance and the value of this. So uh, that's uh, that's kind of our notion. Hopefully, you know, this time next week, we'll have a, a further story to tell uh, uh, if we're able to you know, get buy in from the town to, to buy into the pilot. Yeah. So, so, so two things to what you mentioned about um, the municipal part of things and getting to the heads of the, of the folks who are using the private haulers. That's your town engineer because they the contract is made for the those vendors. So you, when you go in and you speak with that engineer, like we did with Jason and with Drew, we had to find out, right? What are those contracts and are they willing to start hauling the greens and what would that take? We weren't exactly finding the numbers to be amenable. They were more, um, uh, they, were, they were more difficult than we thought, so we uh, changed our direction for the moment. But um, that's where you're going to find how to get to those folks' heads. But they're also going to be talking to their neighbors, and when uh, they their neighbors go and do self haul, and the conversation is going to be coming from their neighbors, and especially just to introduce uh, bring in the social component. You know, like the, the app next door app, a lot of conversation goes on in there um, across the forks. And and the, the awareness I, that if, if that's the one like Facebook yeah maybe next door are quick little pieces of information and then people latch in and and start a conversation in there and the quality of information <coughs> that exchanges is is very helpful and the and the other part about the the um, the grant funding which Mark didn't pick up on the cue on that one um, he was like what oh, so seventy. So 75-25% is the one that we're looking at, which is a state grant, and we're allowed to, in our 25%, so we have to come up with 25%, we're not knocking on doors, we're not asking for money from the town, we're using in-kind volunteer labor, yeah. and so when you said it, the volunteer element, you can, you can quantify that because that's what Jason's job is as first engineer in, the, in his department, he's the data dude. He has every line item and every column. I thought you were the truck dude. No, he's going to be. Oh, he's, he's, he's the private truck dude with, with Mark, but he's the data dude. Uh, yes. Mr. Data dude. Yeah, so, this, so the climate smart communities, I know uh, you, can't, you guys are you still, are you still driving for points in East Hampton? Um, I don't know. Yeah, well, we're, we're looking for a, a board designations. So okay. We're, we're just looking to, um, pr we're prioritizing the composting. Awareness programs uh, starting, and we're just starting. Uh, that's a 2023 priority of the energy and, and my priority. Mm -hmm. So, I'm looking for any idea on how to get people engaged, public, private, you know, um, pilot programs. Mm -hmm. uh, my question on the pilot program did you consider uh, doing a pilot program with any of the C CSAs? Where people are going to the farm weekly to get their CSA and then yeah, they yeah. do the bucket. Well, well that's like the, the, what they're doing in the, in the city with the, the community gardens and the point for the, the drop-off. Uh, 
that would make sense with the farmer's market. So, so the, the farmer's market, it's all green vendors. And when they have waste, it goes right there. So what I was just raising my hand for is because I really think the best um, operating procedure out here would be to get the same rolling giant garbage cans with the locking lid so raccoons can't get into it, have them stationed around town or in front of businesses. So right now in the city, businesses are getting little brown bins. And at the farmer's market are the bigger green bins, and there's like 10 of them lined up. And so everyone's been trained, come to the farmer's market, get your food, drop off all your compost. So if we had uh, supermarkets instead of bottle redemption, because we can't do anything with the glass anyway, turn those rooms into um, compost, you know, collection sites, and then just have, uh, you know, a guy with a truck and a landscaping trailer where you just roll those bins right onto the back of the landscaping trailer, or you have a truck with a lift gate that would lift them up into the truck so that you don't need to spend $130,000 on a garbage truck because we have private haulers who, honestly, I'm not very optimistic that the private haulers, and I'm not optimistic that their trucks are going to be proper for the compost. So I think like to do the best you know, if we had those bins in a protected environment, they wouldn't get damaged the way I seen. So they offered, when we looked at that uh, sifter, they offered us some of their broken bins, which we could fix. Um, they're expensive. We could probably get them, you know, very cheap. They have a whole bunch of them because they in the city have a ton of money allocated for this. And they're just buying new bins. And so the bins that break, that have a broken latch, they're just sitting off to the side now, not being used. So fixing a latch, putting a piece of plastic in, grabbing those bins for free or nothing, and then utilizing them out here. I mean, maybe it would look better if they were brand new bins, but I mean, I'm the resource director. I just want to reuse everything possible and to get something off the ground. So I was thinking, you know, we have a we have a big CSA business on some of our larger farms where people, lots of people, it's it, we would need to scale up are going weekly to their farm to pick up their, their box of vegetables. Yeah. And it seems like a great opportunity to give them a bucket, have them bring it back. And, and this is the so. collect demand model. We have 130 <coughs> CSA, a 22 week season to pick up on food um, on Saturdays. The town helped us acquire uh, the help funds to buy buckets with yep. labels on them with yes and no on them. And uh, the first week, you check in, pick up your vegetables, and take a bucket home, and then there's a continuous thing. So we've, just, we've done this two years now. We've gotten four tons um, of the food scraps each season. I think you could get CSA members to pay a little more to do that, and, and they could cover the costs of some of the infrastructure around it. Like, even if it's $1 more, whatever, and you vote, it's like a donation to others doing it. <coughs> I mean, if you're already paying, I'm in the CSA at San Lake um, in Southold, and I would pay a little bit more to create that system initially because I'm I, already paying off. <laughs> I think there's a, like there should be a tremendous amount of money available to us. Uh, it's just the avenue for the allocation. Is it part of the water? Part of the UCF fund? CPF fund yeah, that's so going to water. water, water mm -hmm. thing? Maybe that we can marry the water quality to the composting. Well, and then you get that? CPF. I mean, I don't know if CPF yeah. funds can be diverted for this yeah. cause. It's, I think, it's there's, I think there's enough other sources of funding from the state. And uh, with, uh, I think uh, Toki mentioned, is it the DEC? Mm -hmm. the, the state EPA, funding, is, state is, funding is, DEC, is and EPA are yeah, all three pots of money. Four billion dollars already set aside for this thing that we're doing already. Uh, the second one is the state DEC, of course, and then the other thing, I, I don't know whether the 7525 is another another fund. It's a state, so there's state funds and there's multiples, right? Yeah. And then there's uh, DEC funds, right? And yeah, then there's state. going to be EPA funds. So there's yeah. three different pots, but they're not just singular grants from each pot. Right. There's multiple. Right. So <laughs> one we found, we didn't find it. Our, our grant writing specialist for the town found it. And, and we were thinking 50-50 when we were yeah, right. budgeting, right? Yeah. And they found 75-25. Yeah. We, 
Can we move to Beth? Oh, because we're going to be, we're so excited that we're running out of time. So, yeah. um, want Beth to go and then we yeah, can start talking. Yeah, a little spicy and also to this conversation. I'm really happy to meet you guys. You've been on my list to call for a very long time, actually. I told him to wait to stay. Yeah, like, <laughs> we definitely need to talk. <laughs> Um, I'm already like texting Judy, my partner, going, we have to have these guys speak, we have to go do a tour. She's like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so we'll, we'll arrange it after. <laughs> um, but so I'm representing the Long Island Organics Council today. Um, we formed in 2021. Um, it just so happened that Judy and Joy had met each other and both were interested in starting um, community composting and maybe even anaer small anaerobic digesting uh, projects. And then myself and um, another colleague, Rachel, who's no longer part of the group, um, we both went to the New York State Organics Council and said, hey, there's not much that we see happening on Long Island. We want to do something. And they said, great, why don't you guys all talk to each other and form the Long Island Organics Council? So I feel like we should just join forces and just be one. <laughs> um, we're always welcome to have more people on the steering committee because this is us. Um, we host bi-monthly meetings and other events, like we did the tour to uh, you know, Glenda's shop there. And um, you know, we covered a bunch of topics. So I made a list so I don't forget. We talked about schools, composting, Bokashi composting, community composting, like we featured in Port Washington. Do you know Claire Brazel and her operation up there? Oh, okay, good. So we'll push you all together too. Um, we talked about the New York State law, of course. And um, before I forget, I also want to point out that there's the New York State Organic Summit that's taking place yeah. in Syracuse, the third yeah. to the fifth. So we're definitely going to try to go up there. <laughs> yeah, the bus, yeah, do? let's just go together. That would be fun. <laughs> um, we, we, were all fit in your car. <laughs> we were all fit in your car. <laughs> Francesca is our intern from Stony Brook. She's an environmental st study student. So our mission is to support the Long Island community in recovering and composting their organic materials by facilitating relationships, sharing resources, and creating opportunities for collective action, which is exactly what's happening here. So this is like my, our dream. <laughs> You're making my dreams come true. <laughs> um, we're still an um, unincorporated organization. So because I run my own separate nonprofit called Green Inside and Out, which is focused on toxins and other things. Um, and we're a 501c3. We've partnered with the Organics Council and applied for a grant with the New York State Pollution Prevention Institute, which is up in Rochester and um, at RIT. And we were shocked to actually be awarded the grant this year, um, this past year. So the project will implement a food scraps drop-off site um, and we were supposed to work with a Long Island municipality. We had started talking to the town of Huntington and then they changed their mind. They were interested then not. So of course the first person I called when I heard no was Mark. <laughs> so I said, I know you guys already have a lot going on. We think we could work together. And of course now we're well on our way and January 4th, the town board of Riverhead just adopted the resolution to work with us on this project. So she, she came with $20,000 in her hand. <laughs> 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 you know, the other thing, too, this is the standalone. We try to incorporate that as our 2575 or 5050 or whatever. I said, now you can't do that. It's already a state operation that's giving you this money, right? It's like, oh, bummer. Oh, no, good. Because what we're going to do is take this like this and make drop off money, which is part of the transportation section of that, that big that grid. So now we've got helpful to municipalities now we can use this as a pilot test to see how this is going to work we can do one toter at a time right we don't have to do 35 of them at a time and, and manage it and send somebody there 96 hours a week we can use this as an educational tool hey this week you know where it's going to be this week you know where it's going to be next week tour all the riverhead as an education and outreach component he said for the climate smart communities board we're working for jason this one yeah, Jason, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's it's a twenty thousand dollar grant, um, mostly to cover our time because we're doing outreach, which I'll get to in a minute. Next slide. <clears throat> um, but uh, so I'll just go down this. I mean, first, obviously, we had our basic steps where we had to identify a town to work with, so we've done that successfully. Thank you, Riverhead. Um, 
The, the idea is basically to help the township identify a suitable location where food scraps can be transported to for composting, because in Huntington it was an issue because there was really no place to go. But here you guys have farms um, and relationships with farms. So that, that's really a, a really nice relationship um, that we can you know, develop more. Um, to help the town address issues of carting and transportation. But again, I think that's been sort of worked out with the, tr the town trucks. We're, we're going to talk about that more. Um, and also, obviously, help the town identify a suitable location for a drop-off site. And I mean, potentially more than one, really, uh, you know, like you're saying. But the grant provides up to $4,500, or I think it's just under $5,000 for the purchase of 15 um, 65-gallon bins that lock, like the ones you were describing. And also five hundred dollars to make a municipal sign that would go, you know, at the site to educate people what goes in the bin or not. Those are the toters you had in the picture. Yeah. Those yeah. Ones. Yeah. yeah so, um, so in terms of education and outreach, <clears throat> most of our time will be doing, um, you know, outreaches. We're we're paid for at least four outreach events um, to, you know, just talk about the the project. Um, and then part of what we'll be doing too is trying to get people to, you know, give us their email address somehow. <laughs> we'll have to figure that out how to do that exactly so that we can follow up with them, you know, take a survey, like kind of what do you know now and what did you learn from any presentation that we give and discussion? And also, you know, a couple of months down the line, are you still doing this? Or did you just come show up and say, oh, that was nice and not do it anymore? We can use a QR code for that. Yeah, so right. we're going to try to develop a QR code to make it simple for people to sign up through the website. And that way, also, if we are having contamination issues, we can send reminders like, hey, no stickers and those sort of reminders. So we're basing this whole project um, next slide, on some successful projects that were done upstate in Westchester. One of our colleagues had worked at the Nature Center at the town of Greenberg. So this is just an example of some of their outreach materials and we'll, we can make it, you know, to suit the town of Riverhead and we'll work <coughs> together and make it, uh, you know, appropriate for the town. Next, next slide. I just put some pictures in of this is the town of Greenberg and what they did with their bins. They just have a little section off of a town parking lot. And, you know, like you were saying, as long as they, what they would do is open one bin, mm -hmm. then once it's filled, then shut it, it locks and move to the side so there's, there's no, no vermin. And um, it's not like a big open, you know, thing where people are dumping scraps. So this way it's kind of um, manageable. We can take two or three at a time in a truck and bring it to the facility. Yeah, one of the barriers we got right away was um, the idea that people were, were dying, or uh, dumpster diving into the food scraps. All right, which also points to the idea that if there's still usable stuff in there, then we need to do step back in the loop to talk to people about why the good stuff's going in there in the first place. All right, so there's another avenue for education outreach now. Yeah, so the next few slides are just some pictures of what they did. This is what it says on the sign. Do we have a sign? Do we have a sign shop? We have a sign shop. Yeah. Yeah, and we have one. True's kind of drawn back on that. Lanco yeah. Supply is what Greenberg used. Yeah, oh, Jason's uh, smiling. Oh, oh, okay, yes. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So we could get something like that done. And depending on where we drop off, we can decide if it'll include the meat yeah, bones. Yeah, right. okay. Yeah, we'll have to see what they want to take. Yeah. So that's it. Just the next few slides that take our <laughs> pictures of what they do. Yeah, see, there. see, so the, the bean and bagel lady for her name, please. Uh, the, Joanne. Joanne was the date, right? Rebel. Joanne is silent. Um, so, yeah, because they're giving stuff away at the end of the day. So, the first thing you want to do is feed yourself. Second mm -hmm. thing, it is, this is the independent, uh, the uh, Institute for Local Self Reliance.org, ILSR. We depend on them for a lot of materials, and, and their yeah. pyramid is very different than everybody else, especially the EPA. And the idea is you feed yourself, then you feed other people. You feed animals, but if the chickens are going through this thing, or you're feeding your dog. Your dog. Um, the next thing is to. Well, to the soil, compost yes. the soil, yes. right? The yes. farms. Yes. Then comes the anaerobic digester. Then comes burning. Then comes landfill. All right, we're trying to bring that up through the last three and stop here. Right? The compost is our best option. It's not going to be the same for what uh, for Western Suffolk. Uh, different discussion. Yep. This is the way they did their their pickup there. I think they were bringing it to uh, a facility upstate. 
uh, further north from them. And we found um, so we that, that truck picks up that pail and yeah. dumps it. Yeah. Yeah. But the but told me, you guys told me that that that, that, that Yeah, no, well, they have the smaller them. trucks that pick it up on the side, mm -hmm. you know, and dump it into the side. Yeah. But the big trucks like that, I didn't know they had the capability to pick up the pail with the lid and dump it. Probably an attachment, but you guys were the ones that told me it's really rough on equipment. It's rough well, on Well, you right? break the pails. Like, I've tried to do two pails. Yeah. The lids break off. Yeah. So um, when you use a machine, yeah, they're like banging it and early morning. They twist. Yeah, they twist. It's like, you know, a bench up top with a little hook. Right. They could just pull it back. They just pull it out. out. Same as like a dumpster, like a small little gotcha. Wheel. So trying not to break those five hundred dollar pails is a priority as well. Yeah, it goes to Ulster County where it gets composted up there. Yeah, and we'd like to do a field trip yeah. up there too. Actually, that's so another thing we want to organize. So we, we talked to Bedford at length, uh, and they yeah, they, everything goes to Ulster County. They don't get any benefit out of their 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 waste. Is, that, yeah. is this a municipal pickup? Is it? Is it um, are these private? Well, is this private? I'm not sure. So this management discussion expands into how do we deal with the carters? What yeah. is the impact on their business model? How much are we taking off our ticket fees? But where are we making that up? They're not going to be happy with us taking a third of their waste away as part of their input. All right. So these, these the next discussion is going to be at the county level, probably for us um, <laughs> to talk about. We started talking about all these already. All right, but I would like to. I'm glad that we are here without that looking at us. I don't know why we're in the room. This is the conversation today. Yeah. But quick question yeah. on on the, the truck and how it picks up the coder. Is that a deadlift from the ground? Yeah, usually. The guy okay. did that. Usually. Well, we're, I'm thinking about Jason well, and his back, and different. like, does yeah, he have I'm to lift it right? onto that? Where's the top, man? Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> All right. So in this case, in the in the in the case of Greenberg, and I think also with Scarsdale, what they did was um, the town opted to purchase those little $5 kitchen top containers and educate people uh, to use them. Um, so, you know, if you go to the next slide, the, I think they had volunteers put the stickers on and say what goes in the bin yeah. or not, and yeah. they sold them basically at cost. I think they bought them for five bucks and sold them for five bucks. I said just, this 20 years ago. I was yeah. at the, uh, the Sustainability Institute in Malloy, and the most expensive huge budget. I think they made silver on the silver planet smart. And he said, I thought $30,000, he said, I think was making a political suicide mistake. By buying they were gone in three days. Right, so people want to do this, and this was 20 years ago, right? But you know, so I think the time is right. They sold backyard compost bins too in the town of North Hempstead. Do they? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so the, time, the reason why I'm here is from Southampton town in 2006 gave away ten dollar black bins that were three parts with the top, mm -hmm. and I got two of them, and that's why I'm here today because they saw me compost. Wow! They don't yeah. Yeah. Um, do that. Town hasn't, hasn't done it since. Yeah. Tell them that's exactly. right. <laughs> there you go. I, I know those people. Yeah. Right. So yeah. one more one more thing. Uh, I want to I want uh, Paul to talk about this. Can you talk about that? Sure. It's you didn't bring it to show it. Right? No, it's brief. But um, so East Hampton is currently talking to a company, and we're looking to find a way to work with them, and maybe start a pilot program where we could offer. We haven't figured out the logistics yet, but offer households. A uh, on the counter electric pump to uh, minimize, I think it's up to 90% that you minimize your food waste uh, volume. And uh, we're looking into maybe if you can mix this in with the leaves at the uh, recycling center, take it to farms, or just put it in your back garden. Mm -hmm. And uh, we haven't figured out how to work with them yet because they are requiring that um, we. Do a co collaboration, and I think the town is not looking to do that with one specific company. Yeah. yeah it's very hard. We have to send that an RFP. Right. We're a municipality, right. and we can't endorse particular products. So, yeah. how, whether they, this gets done through a nonprofit mm -hmm. yeah, or, or something like that. There is this the same company, the, the Canadian company? Yeah, that's the company. That's how much How much are they? Uh, they run up to $400. Yeah. But they would offer it at a discount, a big discount. But I wanted to get your feedback on how this, how do you guys view this? Because I see everyone's talking about manually composting. 
How would this interfere with that? Not wrong, but would not, it would be parallel because yeah. found out in Calverton, there are, are communities, like there's a gated community of folks that the whole thought of saving their food scraps and putting them out at the, at the road was like, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. So so this is a wonderful thing to have on the counter for them. If, if they're going to participate, that might be the only way they do. Right. And, the and they're not going to be alone. There's the a lot of other populations rules, like that. HOA rules won't even let them put it in the back of their, their own garden. They won't even let them compost themselves. So right, because it's, be shared, it, right, it's shared land. I see this as an opportunity to appeal to certain people that right. won't do, no matter how exactly. much you educate, right. they won't do the backyard, they won't do the bucket, they won't do any of that. And the beauty of this is I have one of these at home, is the opportunity that it makes you aware of, it's a small bucket, right? So it makes me think like, I could be using my, uh, like my green to make a compost. I don't need to fill this up every night so I can use that, those scraps for something else. Mm -hmm. I could eat it probably, like you said, yeah. you feed yourself first. Yeah. So it makes you aware of how much you're actually wasting. Yeah. And that's a lot of the awareness we found, yeah. Mary. Can yeah. talk about that for a minute? Yeah, no, it's true. And uh, I'm going to pass around, maybe follow you on to this is the odorless, yeah, dry, concentrated, 90% mm -hmm. of your food reduced down. How long uh, does that take? About five hours. Oh, and wow. that bucket, and that's, uh, look, that's probably a portion of the bucket. But um, I think, yeah, I think Paul's right. People are willing to do this and participate like different levels, like um, the uh, innovators taking on the first, uh, paying the highest price perhaps to um, participate, but be part of the solution. And, and I just wanted to add, I've had mine prior to COVID. And what I've done in my experience at home, I have a backyard composter, so I have a landscaping company and I offer, Compost to my clients is um, I, I view this as a compost accelerator. So I put this in my back of the compost and it seems to attract more worms. Oh, it's easier to get through. Yeah. And yeah. it acts as a brown. Yeah. yeah. So what challenges the cost to the consumer? It's a big cost. For, for so what are, the, what are the additional costs? With that, as far as the biofilters or the amendments? So this company. This is a uh, food cycle science, part of a uh, vitamins. Uh, okay. Vitamins. Oh, wow. okay. So um, they say they claim that you don't need to buy the carbon filters, and you don't need to buy amending things. No, that's you. another company that's called Lomi. 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 But, but you can operate Lomi without it, and Lomi has freedom they have settings. Free so it's it's they're, they're similar. There's some differences. Right. I love my Lomi. I have a backyard bucket, and I. Stuff as Paul does with the bucket, but I don't use any of the amendments. It doesn't need it. And I, I have a loan, so I don't buy any of the amendments. I um, I just you know use the 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 simple setting, which is five to six hours depending on how much they're running. All right. Yeah. The innovation. But, I'm background. I'm, I should have said in my corporate life. I'm in, I advise large companies on innovation and also on sustainability, and so I'm trying to now apply that to community side and then create behavior change in large organizations. Okay. And as an innovator, they are their products like the, this one is very exciting. I'm now a little me. There's one that just launched a month ago in California called the Mill that looks like an actual garbage can. So you're gonna see in the next, I would say year to two years, the most efficient in-house uh composting gadgets and that kind of thing. So if we can start to create the behavior and the rest of the infrastructure. Then that second, third tier of people who are maybe not quite there yet, it's going to be too easy to do for them to resist. So I just I just want to share that. There's part of this, this composting thing is a lot of people ask me, so what do I do with it? And I don't want to put it in my garden, or I don't have a garden. So having a, another program, compacting yeah. program, or drop it off at the recycling center would be so helpful to people. That's so in my helpful. last meeting with the company, one of my biggest things is. I think of end of life. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do with this unit when after right. five years yeah. long, long or worse? So they <laughs> agreed to uh, if we do uh, start a pilot program with them, they take back to you. So we don't have to put it in our land. Oh really? Or, have it or, mm -hmm. or send it up to wherever it is. That's That's food food recycling? Recycling? Yeah, it's uh, food FCS 30 is the model. Food cycle. Uh, you can buy it through vitamins or directly and food cycle. So retail right now is four hundred dollars, and you're hoping to have partnership. Yeah. 
where the town subsidizes some of the yeah, costs. Yeah, that's the real sticking point. That's the sticking point yeah. because but down, you're giving a benefit. That was that was your initial uh, ask. We can't promote a, pro a particular product. Right. That, that's that's a, a non starter. Right. right. As a municipality, you can't say, hey, buy the surfboard, right. hey. But you, you could find one person in East Hampton who could uh, <laughs> like this. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's the bit of East Hampton. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, I mean, the one that the East Hampton yeah. gave yeah. them those black buckets. Yeah. It gave everybody those right. black buckets. It's yeah. it's yeah. different than endorsing it to you. Yeah. If we're yeah. endorsing yeah. a brand, yeah. this is a commercial enterprise. Yeah. The bucket. Right. You know, we can buy, we can buy, we can, we hear that COVID case too. Yeah. You know, that's, that's very different than saying this company, you know, the town is behind this particular company when there's so many different, I mean, it's just not something. What, what about an allowance that can be made uh, 50 or 100 dollars towards any of your choices? There's a, so that's like the set up degree big program. Okay. We, uh, municipalities, and these are challenges to think about when you're working with municipalities. You can't offer that to 30 people, you have to offer that to everybody. Right. So now this that little, kind of funding is not. This was really, we're only talking there's a few, some people that are going to use that, but there are going to be people that are willing to take the bootstraps in place. Yeah, not have well, that's fun. this is just one. Yeah. Right. So I'm very interested in the manual programs, the idea that people, you know, uh, the uh, this is a, a Paul's approach, but we're open to a town-wide approach, uh, yeah. uh, as many firms as we accept. And I'm surprised that the East Township town does not have good waste. It used to just be just a manpower. Um, our labor pool, as everyone knows, uh, is shrunk uh, quite far down. So all of our departments are suffering from manpower issues and again, the contamination issues. Which comes down to money to monitoring that problem. So now the incentive for me, budgetarily, at this particular time in the world, is that the landfills are closing and it's going to cost us more to trans the town and municipality mm -hmm. more to transfer that out. So there's openness here. Right. Plus, uh, you know, we're looking to raise awareness in the community. Mm -hmm. I, I see, mm -hmm. I see two different things. People call it the town, but the, the government is the municipality. I'm hoping the town, yeah. you know, People businesses, the yeah. everyone buys into this because, mm -hmm. as one of your slides said, you can't uh, a town or municipality, as I call it, can't can't take this on by themselves. Mm -hmm. right. So part of uh, what we will have funding for, and you know, we we are going to get yearly funding from the Southport Wind Farm when that comes on. Uh, that's for renewable energy, renewable and sustainable projects. Of course, we've spent what that's going to be. You know, two hundred fifty thousand. We're splitting with uh, five hundred thousand with the trustees a year. Um, the town trustees. It's a separate or uh, organization. You know, a regulatory body over our beaches. Yeah, we're spending, you know, we're spending $5 million of that 250000 But there is funding coming down. And that's why whatever's been done in towns in the past and everything, where are we right now in this particular snapshot of time? And I see a lot of opportunities, including people just culturally wanting to waste less mm -hmm. in their lives. Um, and uh, people who come out, uh, uh, we are a big resort area, obviously. Um, people who come out, I see them now hiring beekeepers, local people to come and take care of their bees. Um, you know, people who tend put in them tend organic <laughs> gardens for them. I also see this as an economic <laughs> opportunity to be like a composting concierge, you know, uh, for them also. So I, I just see right now in this particular time for East End Towns, uh, this is the time. Opportunities are over here. Yeah, we need the landscape. Uh, we, I forgot when you said that the landscapers have to be in this conversation yeah. very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so addressing the myth of East Hampton, um, there is no myth in Sagaponic. That's how outside it is. It's not in East Hampton, but when we're looking at um, uh, geographic areas and possible entities, which Sagaponic is a village of Southampton Town, um, appealing to that population because they would, I mean, the, the, you know, folks who have Uber, Uber dollars, you know, they're not all very selfish, right? A lot of them would like to see some, some goodness happening with, with what they have. And, and this could be a way to reach folks 
who, who would like to sponsor in different townships on the East End. And so, so I think folks might have been thinking about East Hampton in that regard, but I think you could certainly look, we could certainly look at Sagaponic in that regard. Also, Sag Harbor is the village, and East Hampton is the village. Now, that, that's not true. Uh, uh, Sagaponic is, is, a, is, it's is a on the Atlantic yeah. Ocean. It, it's yeah. a village, yeah? They're incorporated. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to say that um, the other opportunity with this is it, it accepts some of the things you guys mentioned about that isn't accepted in some of the backyard accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I put in uh, shrimp uh, skins. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I put in uh, some cheese, dairy, small bones, oh, uh, uh, avocado. <laughs> 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 you have a good humor, Mark. So, uh, one uh, issue or question I want to raise, Mark, is, you know, obviously today's conversation was very productive, but I wonder, you know, going back to I think one of the first slides you put up, instead of a, a list of, you know, maybe we could consider going a step further uh, and uh, thinking about, you know, the people who are here and other people who aren't here and other organizations who are here, that there ought to be some sort of a East End or uh, a common no, bio region of yeah. uh, organization and alliance. It doesn't need to be incorporated or set up as its own entity, but just yeah. as Recognize. a series, uh, you know, yeah, uh, some so sort of uh, group, me, me a group of group, groups, and that could have not just a listserv, but maybe a website, because yeah, I think that would be very useful in terms of really making information what? more generally available yeah. to people. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's not that difficult to you know to create the website, uh, and, but you know a, a modest amount. So maybe that, that would be something to think about as a next step, kind of uh, giving the alliance a name so that we can you know throw that name around to bully the local town officials when we need to by saying that the East End Alliance or the County Bioregional Alliance is there. You go. That's, That's it. Right? That's it. Yeah. East End Bio Bio. East End bio region, East End bio region alliance. Yes, that's a discussion. Back to County County. Was it once? Yes. Oh, there's a big section like 30 years ago. Happy break. Quick question. It goes back to the discussion we had a couple weeks ago. This is sort of like a uh, I don't know if it's an elephant in the room or whatever, but you had mentioned that there are plans to do it, a very large anaerobic yeah. digester. Mm -hmm. So I just want to bring that up because um, if you have this big facility that's available, yeah. are people going to say, well, this is an easier solution? Yeah. Yeah, in the front of the house for the restaurant, please take my plastic and fork. So please, how, yes. how, with everything we've been talking about for two hours here today, how do we come up with a way of um, I don't know what. Sending out the right people, we need to so, to suppress the carbon to save the water. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We need but we need to grow food that's yeah. healthy, yeah. and we need to raise awareness and education around the fact that, um, you know, even if we're adding this, yeah. we need to create um, a, regen a regenerative. Environment. You know, this that's is the question I just said, right? So, whatever you put in, it's not for us. It's for the guy who runs it. And in a nutshell, to your point on enriching our own soils, we're already enriching our soils, but we're at an expense that ships it into us. So, let's be self sustaining yeah. and provide yeah, that. But number, but number two, but number two, two like the 200. Are you throwing that water away? So the 200 ton AD that's the elephant in the room is not going to provide any of that. And we can't feed that beast, even in our bioregion, 100% of compliance. So you have to think about the environment when that's here and how we can. But, and I'd love you to be involved with the discussion from each of the five towns because we're talking about this being in Calverton, Lucky Pockley. And we're already talking about it at the municipal level. We need to, I would like us very much to be talking about this at a regional level, please, because we've got a cargo airport coming too, by it, the way. This isn't future. They've already had meetings and yeah. public hearings. So whatever you your minds are starting to kick in right now, whatever writing that you can do that we mm -hmm. can circulate in the mechanism you offer, 
Um, we could use your thoughts and your concerns to steer it in another direction to guide the people who are making the decisions, which is our town board. Those are the, the those are the legislators. They have they're already being danced with from mm -hmm. these developers, and it's a little too cozy. I'll just leave it right. at that. And it's going to impact everybody on, yeah, on, on the transportation costs, but then you also have to also have a car charter with parking problems, which is already in terms of recycling a whole other sort of negative issue. We don't make enough to feed the beast. Well, so, we can't feed the beast. We can never keep it alive. Their so, transportation and if is we do real. It, we're going to starve the beast because we're going to do a reduction of waste campaign right. next. Yeah. So if you, if you could each in, in in the individual entities that you are today, um, if you could produce an email of a page and CC, uh, certainly it would go with whatever mechanism Mary has, but if you could CC our Callerton Civic so that we really honestly, we want to be on the same page. Um, we want to, uh, we want to know what each one is thinking and if that could happen. Let me take two more questions. I have one form a whole coalition. Yeah. Yeah. This coalition. Yeah, it's not just it's not just two it, 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 it's yeah. true, and I have to tell you how the perception happens. Having been the member, the, the leader of the civic for two and a half years, I went in front of that board on a on a twice a month basis. They ignore the individual and they say we represent people. They don't ignore when they have 500 letters going in. Right. So that volume matters mm -hmm. very much. much more than an alliance saying, this is who we are. They don't believe that. They're not gonna look into it. You're like, that's one communication, we're done. But let's well, what the alliance could do is, you know, we could, there could be a draft of form letter that's put mm -hmm. together. Exactly. That's, not not all the that's it. And then have your yep. individual members Absolutely. Yep. That's it. modify yep. exactly. it. Exactly. So that, that would be the, one of the prime functions of a of a lot of Oh, yeah, I think Ryan. Joe is right. Yeah. If I could just say one thing, yeah. coalitions really work. And in mm -hmm. South Hold, we formed the North Fork Civics of South Hold, mm -hmm. and we've been very successful with the town. When we yeah. first met with them, they were like, you don't represent everybody. And right. after we've had a bunch of seminars, we did a survey of all the residents that they've had to respond to. We just got them to institute a battery storage moratorium. Now they're paying attention. And because one of the thank civics you, was having thank you, thank you. a meeting on a battery storage unit, the supervisor came to that meeting with a press release saying, I'm going to propose a moratorium on these. Two more questions. Is he going to get votes or what? I just I just wanted to um for us in Shuttle Brown, our the DEC grant money is a big thing for us. Mm -hmm. We we plan on that. Mm -hmm. We probably do really hard thing without it. Um, for equipment, also partnering with places like the Manor, we're still able to get the EC grant for composters, buckets. So that, that that's critical for us. You know that private uh, municipal partnership. The EC recognizes that. So as long as we have a good relationship with the EC yeah. and a good grant record, yes, anything possible. Yeah, you know the, the whole thing about the EC and what we found uh, from a, a very high level meeting a, a, a week or two ago that they're. They can't bend the rules, but they will make, I don't know, creative allowances. Uh, I don't want to pay them into a corner on that, but the idea that the windrow is this and that's all you can have on your farm, what Sally Rowland said from DEC last week in, in our meeting was, well, we found out that if you move the next one to 500 feet away, it's not affecting the water. So that kind of thing, it's not policy and it's not like we're advertising, but we they need to help us, all right? This is my, my comment. You need to help us. You want this stuff done, we will do it, but you need to- And they're getting educated as well. What's that? They're getting educated as well. Yes, and they've asked for our input and all the, the successes that we have and create innovative programs that will take five things and put them into one and then they'll put them on the, the Climate Smart list next year. Mm -hmm. All right, we get 20 points for that. So I'm, I'm, I'm a point hog, but go ahead. <laughs> Can I just to bring up one thing, Brian, maybe, um, but you know, I know here, Brian could answer this better. We have sort of a surplus of of, of uh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we are geographically. I mean, we we, right. we don't sell so much. Right. We don't have you know, right. we can't do. Right. We don't have so many people here. And then 
excess, sometimes we're taking 1,000, 2,000 yards a year. Right. right. So at a sand pit where they have material stuff as well. Yeah. I mean, talking about food scraps? What are you talking about? No, no, no I'm sorry. talking about compost. No. Stuff like um, you know, throw one nor'easter or one hurricane in after yeah, oh, yeah. like you get right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, in my mind, the question is if you amp everything up, you know, is, is this something to, is it to feel comfortable with? I mean, you've got a huge volume that you have that you will have customers for uh, for that material. You have to make it, yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll let that let you let that settle. Well, one more question. It was more of a comment. I love the fact that we're looking into making a, a, a unit, you know, an umbrella coalition. Uh, you guys mentioned some businesses. It would be nice to have a list of the businesses that are participating in these programs because I know personally I would go and support that business because that's they're doing that. So, yeah, this, this issue would come up for us in a concrete way when we started to talk to restaurants locally that yeah. are willing to participate. It would be even better if there's a uh, uh, kind of bio origin alliance yeah. to create some kind of uh, sticker because yeah. that would be right. recognizable That's across correct. the region right. and would give a real incentive for people to participate. Right? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, the Kaya County has beautiful sticker. Yeah, I know. Al Krupski gave me That's one of the where... pins, the lapel yeah. pins, a couple of weeks ago. I said, this is Paris. Yeah. Uh, one more question here. Go ahead. Well, when we're looking at an alliance and uh, listserv, it really seems, as Paul and some of other people have mentioned, what what we need are resources, benchmarking. Where does that work? What's working mm -hmm. best? Mm -hmm. What are the pitfalls? So people we can connect. Who's, who's, so it's the, the connection with stuff. And I know from a town perspective, what financial results have people had? Because money talks, follow yeah. the money. That's always important. So the, the New York State Organic Council is a really good um, resource when it comes to those things, at least at where you know it's worked upstate. Um, and also, like you mentioned, the Institute for Local Self Reliance, looking at it more on a national level. Yeah. And you could easily with this website, you could actually create a template of how for key KPIs, key metrics that each experiment needs to demonstrate. And you kind of capture those in that similar way, and then you can. It could be a place for you to download materials for your presentation to the to the municipality, oh, and yeah. it can also. I mean, you can have a lot of those. Um, happy to volunteer to help with. You're, you're, you are that side of things. That's your skill set. Um, I work for Accenture, which is gigantic technology, oh, sure. firms, yeah. but I advise on more innovation and growth. But I have access to design teams and oh, we could do that. Oh, yeah, right. I can probably get some papers. And I work, like I said, I work on creating change in organizations, so I know how to tell those stories. Um, so, uh, so like, yeah, very, very. But I think the last thing I would say is that what I would love us to think about is the education <laughs> component yeah. of this, yeah, and not just from a like school perspective, but like actually yeah, in behavior change yeah, stuff. And so like, there's some stuff I can. Share about. So for our town, a presentation to the town board, you know, it was televised on LTV. Um, I mentioned three, uh, four sentences about a table to farm after I spoke to you. Oh, right. That's how the reporter picked it up. Wow. So a presentation from the East Kensington Town Board in my town, that's a great way to get messages out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. People are really engaged with watching those. They, they're recorded. Mm -hmm. And now that we have the uh, uh, we have we're able to incorporate Zoom into our municipal meetings, yeah. and people can present via Zoom. So yeah. you don't have to yeah. you'll save on your fossil fuels yeah. by zooming in and we'll put your presentation on, on, on there. And as beginning an education program on composting, any resource that you can share with us that we can get out. Uh, we, be incredibly helpful. So the public uh, chat, the public um, pub public, TV. public TV channel, channel twenty two is in Riverhead. So you have LTV. Yeah. That that's uh, that, what's in Southampton. CTV, I think. SEA TV. SEA TV. And is there anything in South Pole? South Pole. Yeah, South Pole is the same and thing. Shepherd Shepherd Island. Island. Yeah. So do they broadcast the municipal meeting? Yes. yes, they do. Yeah. And they have, yep. <laughs> but what's, what's very nice about Channel 22 is they have a pre-programmed guide. So if you 
need to watch the town board meeting and it's only shown one yesterday and then it's going to be shown again at midnight tonight you have to do it the way we used to watch television right now but they also have a live stream we're on youtube so right yeah. okay so we have a live stream component and you can just go to that and it's all archived but yeah, the precious yeah. stuff is at the top and you can yeah. back you can rewind you can it and listen to us the ltv channel and every time there's a board meeting all of our regulatory boards plus the town board are broadcast. You have to subscribe for yours? No, I mean, on YouTube, you can subscribe. Ah, yeah. You just, you know, subscribe for free, and yeah, yeah. then you get everything. And it's reusable, which is what I like. The uh, committee, the Energy Sustainability Committee, also puts on forums at LTV. Which oh, I used to watch that when I lived in South Yeah, they so now they're recorded, and now we have links to those on our green pages and everything, and you can go back and get that information. We're, we're light years behind you. All right, this is all good, people. Thank you so much. Thank you. We do, and you're going to have Lizard. If you come to me and say I don't want to be on it, I'll take you off. Mary and I will take it you off. It costs money to get off the list. Yeah, it's ten dollars to get off the list. Otherwise, you can hear from us every ten minutes for the next. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Well, thanks for being here. Thank you for making it happen. Awesome.